And here we are with Melanie Phillips. How are you, Melanie? Hi, Abby. Very good. How are you? Very well. So it seems like changes are happening. And if, if I'm correct, you're calling it the Trump effect. Well, I don't like to upset or shock people of a nervous disposition, but it certainly seems that something has changed in Britain. Um, and uh, it could be the imminent accession of uh, President-elect Trump uh, to the White House because, you know, only a few weeks ago, less than four weeks ago, we had this um, unfortunate episode where the British government uh, not only voted for the infamous UN Security Council Resolution uh, 2334, which bashed Israel over its settlements policy, but actually helped craft the resolution and pushed it through. And then, uh, about a day or so later, we had uh, the British Prime Minister, Mrs. Theresa May, uh, suddenly launching a broadside against Secretary of State John Kerry uh, for bashing the settlements. Um, and this was fairly remarkable in itself, but nothing like what happened at Par in Paris on Sunday at the conference of some, what is what's it, 70 nations, uh, called ostensibly to put the Middle East peace process back on track, but actually uh, to stick the knife in into Israel good and proper uh, before President Obama uh, leaves office. And there we found the British government uh, uh, not only refusing to sign the, by that time, fairly anodyne, but nevertheless still fairly obnoxious uh, declaration uh, at the end of that uh, 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 conference, uh, saying that it was uh, inappropriate uh, to uh, needlessly sort of uh, uh, provoke uh, this kind of uh, situation, especially when the neither party to the Middle East conflict was actually there, and it was against the wishes of the Israeli government. I mean, I've never, I don't think I've ever seen those words that the British government says we've done something because uh, it's not, a, it's not in the interest or the, it's not in the wishes of the, of the Israeli government. I don't think I've ever seen those words uttered by a British government. Wow. And then, and then, shortly after that, it vetoed an attempt by the French. Uh, to put forward a res another resolution, basically endorsing and welcoming what happened in Paris. And the British were able to veto that in the European Union's uh, Foreign <laughs> Affairs Council, much to the horror and disgust of a lot of countries who said, not surprisingly, what on earth is going on with Britain? And they, their conclusion was that President Trump, President-elect Trump, had let it be known, uh, I think possibly by tweet, his preferred mode of expression, it would seem, um, that he expected Britain in future uh, to veto any future uh, uh, UN resolutions which bashed Israel. In other words, he expected Israel to support. He expected Britain to support Israel. Um, I agree, a, a, quite a revolutionary thought. But lo and behold, that's what Britain did. Um, and now we find the Palestinians jumping up and down, saying how appalling Britain is and how dreadfully it's behaved. Uh, I'm sure they're in as much of a state of shock as I am as, and as everybody is, but possibly uh, not in quite the same kind of direction. So I can only put it down to the uh, fact that the British government has finally realized that it might not be the smartest diplomatic and political move in the world to seriously hack off President-elect Trump just before he comes into office, given that he actually uh, has uh, warm feelings towards Israel and that possibly it might be in Britain's interests uh, to moderate its traditional uh, deep suspicion, dislike, and even hostility towards Israel, not least because Britain is also hoping at this very moment to uh, conclude uh, a trade deal with America. Uh, now, this is terribly, terribly important for Britain because, as you may know, Britain is in the beginning stages of trying to extricate itself from the European Union. Um, and it is of the most inestimable importance to get a trade deal with America because it would transform for the better Britain's negotiating hand as it seeks to uh, wrestle uh, itself out of the European Union with minimal damage from other European Union countries. And so it is probably pretty desperate to secure this deal. And so uh, that would be another reason why uh, it would not want to go against President-elect Trump. So, yes, I think it is uh, a sign of the Trump effect, and I know that 
people of a nervous disposition may now have to go and lie down in a darkened room for some time after I've said these words. Do these policy shifts be optimistic moving forward? Um, uh, I'm never known for my optimism. <laughs> I tend to be, you know, uh, somebody who always is fairly cautious about thinking that everything's getting better. Um, and, you know, I think we have to be quite realistic and uh, honest with ourselves um, and to say that at the moment we simply don't know. We don't know how President-elect Trump is going to behave when he becomes President Trump, when he's actually got his feet under the table in the Oval Office. Um, you know, he's a man uh, whose uh, past record suggests he is volatile and that he, you know, we, we can see he's not stuck to what he has said from one speech to another. And so we quite honestly, none of us has got the faintest idea of how he's going to behave in office. And I would suspect he's on a pretty steep learning curve um, uh, because, you know, in terms of foreign policy, for example, uh, he's going to be dealing with a world of tremendous complexity and dangers. Um, he's not stupid, and he will know that he's got to get his head around this, and it's a challenge for anybody to get their heads around it, because the alliances and the hostilities and uh, the, the way the world lines up is, is complex, it's changing all the time, um, it, it's, it requires a great deal of, of knowledge and skill to deal with that. So I suspect that even he doesn't know quite how he's going to uh, relate to all these things that are facing him. But um, he's clearly a man of uh, strong, sort of what I would call gut instincts. And I would say that notwithstanding uh, his undoubted character flaws, his crudity, um, uh, the inconsistencies in what he says, and, and all of that, um, he does seem to have what I would call a fundamental moral sense which has been absent uh, from international uh, geopolitical nice. do doings. It, by what, and what I mean by that is that if uh, he sees people who are trying to wipe out another people, he thinks that's wrong, and he thinks those aggressors should be held to account. Now, that's not the way the world's worked so far as far as the Middle East is concerned. <laughs> You've had a situation where for decades, if not the best part of a century, um, the Palestinians or the Arab side has uh, waged a war, a actual war or war of terrorism or war of diplomatic aggression against uh, a victim, Israel. And the Arab side's feet have never been held to the fire. They've never been held to account for their aggression. On the contrary, everybody has soft pedaled uh, in order to kind of keep them within the peace process, uh, so that the result has been that the so-called civilized world has actually effectively punished uh, the victim, Israel, while sanitizing, and I would say incentivizing, Arab aggression. Now, obviously, it's more complicated than that. The Western world, in the shape of America, has given Israel a great deal of money uh, and support. But nevertheless, it's also tied its hands, and it's also put... Um, uh, unconscionable pressure upon it in circumstances where it should have been defending Israel. Um, and if you give in to blackmail, to intimidation, to the threat of terror, uh, which has been coming without remission from the Palestinian <laughs> side, um, then you end up basically uh, incentivizing the bad and dumping on the good. Right. And I think that's a very amoral, or do I mean immoral, uh, position. And that's been the position of the so-called civilized world ever since I can remember in respect to the Middle East. Now along comes President-elect Trump, and everybody says what a dreadful man he is, and how it's going to be the end of civilization as we know it, because he's basically immoral and amoral and crude and vulgar and an abuser of this and a persecutor of that, and he's a potential neo-Nazi, and, and, and so on, so on, so on. Uh, hysterical, overblown, uh, libelous, defamatory um, and uh, in serious respects, completely untrue. But nevertheless, you know, uh, he is what he is, and he's not perfect, he's got clear flaws. And yet, faced with a situation like Israel and the Palestinians, he says, look, you know, we're not having this. We're not having this aggression um, and uh, threats and intimidation without some kind of payback. You're not gonna 
have a free pass anymore. Now, if he follows through on that, that is quite a revolutionary position. And I would say it's a moral position. Now, I know people don't like to hear that because they think that President-elect Trump is incapable of any moral position. But I think people should just take a deep breath and stand back a bit and just think this through from first principles and try to put aside their aesthetic distaste and try to look a bit more carefully at what actually he has said and what people have said he's said and then work out quite who's telling the truth and who's telling lies. And I think the situation then becomes a little bit more complex. And so I think we should just be quite cool about this and just look at it step by step, uh, development by development, and make our own individual decisions about what's going on on the basis of what we see day by day unfolding without coming at this with a kind of prior um, uh, 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 position, without a, without a prior view uh, as a kind of prism through which we see all these events. Uh, I think that is a very sane way to uh, end this topic. And thank you so much for your insight, Melanie. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And I guess the big question is, are we going to see the continuation of this moral stand? And we just have to wait to see. Watch this space, eh? Wonderful. Have a great day, Melanie.